Hello, from Charleston, South Carolina. Just thought I'd give you guys an update about the smoothie board. So, this is what we've done so far. We've had to cut and solder a lot of the original wiring in a smoothie to fit, I'm sorry, in printer bot to fit the smoothie. And then we've got all of our wonderful power supply wire as well. I'm in the process of lengthening some of these wires, like this, uh, this you know, four-pin Molex that goes to the top of my extruder. The reason I have that there is it powers a, f a fan on that E3D hot end right there. I'll zoom in here so you can get it. That's an E3D v version six. That's one of the improvements made to this uh, Frankenbot. And then of course there's an extruder fan on the back of the extruder because we've had some issues in the past with some overheating so that's on there and um, then we've got an independently powered heat bed right here which is kinda cool let's plug it up and give you guys a demo real quick this was bought on eBay from a seller called Kenovo and so far I've been extremely pleased with it um, it's actually one of those cloth fiberglass heating mats that's designed for industrial use but for our purposes it works just great um, and we have this <laughs> old 350 watt power supply from the original printer bot goes in that little power tower back there yeah that was a joke so um, the only thing it's good for is really powering smoothie and the hot end and that's about it so um, Let's take a look at Smoothie once it's all set up. You're going to need to print a case, which Smoothie has some of these cases already on the SD card when you get it, which that is awesome. And then we've got all kinds of fun in here. It looks like a mess, but it's actually not. So your end stop connectors are right over here. And for most end stops, you're going to only use ground and signal. Um, except for my probe, which is this nice little three-wire plug here. That's the Z-probe. The brown is your positive power, blue is your um, signal, and black is your, well, ground. So I wired that in to a 5-volt supply off my power supply, only because I didn't want Smoothie providing 5-volt logic and the ground sinking it somehow to below 5 volts. I want the sensor to have 5 volts. So if you guys are wondering if these uh, little orange sensors will run off of uh, 5 volts, they will. That's not a big issue. Um, the only thing that you do need to change if you do have a printer bot, um, printer bots use a PNP sensor, which is uh, not a sinking sensor, which Smoothie can't take. So we need to change that, that little orange deal out for an NPN, NC, which, you know, NC stands for normally closed. That's pretty easy to, to do. Um, that's that three wired plug that we wired it into just to get signal and ground back on the board. And for most of those end stops, you're going to have signal and ground go onto the board. These are the physical switches here for my X and Y axis. And all that is, is the two wires coming out of the switch are going into my signal and ground pin on Smoothie. And then of course, we've got our FETs over here. Our MOSFETs are um, what run power. So I've got one going to our hot end, of course, one going to our fan. And you have to, on Smoothie, you have a choice. You can supply the MOSFETs with power, which I chose to do instead of putting a little bridging pin on down here to draw from the main power down here. I would rather them have their own supply just because you know those pins are only designed to take two amps and I over engineer the shit out of everything that's just who I am. So anyway and then we have you know that yellow and black right there is my 12 volt supply for the small MOSFETs and then that's my supply for the large MOSFETs there. So it's really uh, really kind of cool we had all this wired up. But just to give you a little 
a little idea. This is your main power. Your left side is 5 volts, your right side is 12 volt. So you're going to want to pull a lead off of your 4 pin CPU on your power supply. Or you can use a Molex. I don't recommend a Molex just because the Molex is, um, doesn't have enough power. It's not generally rated for that. So the connector you're looking for are these small 4 pin CPUs here, right there. That's, that's going to carry sufficient voltage and amperage to, to power everything you want off 12 volt. And as you can see, yellow and black right there for that is pushing 12 volts out, which is what we want. So we've got that. And then, of course, you can take a regular Molex, and that's going to provide 5 volt. Now, this one was odd. I don't know who made these, but they screwed up the, the coloring of the wire. This red wire here that I just left out, that's actually a ground pin. It's not supposed to be there. It's supposed to be black for ground. So we've got r yellow, which is you know 12 volt. We got black in the middle. These these two are supposed to be black. They're ground leads. And then the one that's not populated on this is 5 volt, which is royal pain in the ass. So instead of you know having a hissy fit about it, what I did is I took one of your SATA power leads because they provide power for hard drives and everything else in a computer, and we cut the wire on the end off and ran it so that we would have 5 volt from one of those SATA powers. You can see right back here I've got it wired into a 5 volt lead which goes back here to provide 5 volts at the main. Now Smoothie does come with the ability to use a 5 volt regulator I tried this and for some reason, probably due to my shitty soldering skills, I managed to almost wreck a board. Um, so for beginners, I would not recommend that. I did, however, try it later on and it worked just fine. I'm thinking I may have just got a bad regulator. But so for, for beginners, I would not recommend the regulator route. Um, that's just uh, not cool. Anyway, uh, moving right along, then we've got our motor connectors everybody's favorite thing in the world. Um, they're labeled M1 through M4, which is easy enough. That's going to be X, Y, Z, and extruder. My Z is actually pushed out into two connectors there because my Z is uh, running two motors. That's what lifts this big carriage up. So that's, uh, that's working quite well. For a printer bot, you will not need to touch these in any way. You don't have to change the ordering or anything. I just extended the wires on some of them because it's going to take a lot of wire to get back up in there and all the way to the top. So um, you can extend the wire. You don't have to. Um, depending on your printer, it may already have enough wiring or sufficient wiring. But once you get those power leads run, that's the scary part. Um, and then of course USB will actually provide 5 volts as well that little data connector you know, that goes into your computer that provides 5 volts as well I wanted a 5 volt supply just because you know due to whichever port you plug it in on USB you could have you know, less, volt, less amperage than you need that's not, that's not how we do things that's not how I do things you're welcome to do that if you feel comfortable that yours has that much pushing out but you know for all intents and purposes this is the way I felt I needed to do it because I would rather have a dedicated 5 volt supply and have no worries about uh, insufficient power because your 5 volt is what's going to run your processor on the board it's going to run all your logic stuff 5 volts kind of important so not only that but back here we've got our network connections um, that's a pretty big deal. Not many boards have their own onboard networking. You don't have to have a Raspberry Pi. This thing actually has its own web interface that you can boot up. Um, it's in your config file. Your config file is easily editable in a text editor. If you're using Windows, I highly recommend just using plain Notepad. Not Notepad++ because that causes all kinds of issues. Uh, in the world of software, KISS. Keep it simple, stupid. Yeah, I know. I'm not trying to insult you. That's what my engineering professor always told me. Keep it simple, stupid. I always thought he was being a jerk. 
But the truth is, the simpler you make things, the less complicated they will be. Um, that this applies to 3D printers, life in general, women, well, wait, not women. Women are not simple. So, scratch that. Uh, anyway, moving right along. Uh, about that wiring. We'll, we'll, we'll get there. I keep saying that, I know, but I'm lazy. I work in cybersecurity all night. Give me a break. This is literally my life, you know, my nighttime right now. But anyway, um, I'd be happy to answer some questions you guys have. So please, you know, give me a comment if you have any questions on smoothie. So far, I love this smoothie board. I've had it up and running. Uh, the next video that we put down is going to show the smoothie actually working and doing the auto leveling and doing everything it needs to do. Um, I've been very impressed. For the money that I've spent, I would have to say this is probably the least amount of issue I've had out of 3D printer components. You know, it's just sad you pay $1,300 for a, an item like this, and um, due to the flawed design of the board, they have issues uh, working. See, PrinterBot, when they made their boards, put a micro USB connector on the board, which is severely flawed. You don't want that. Um, micro USB is quite, quite a insufficient for most applications outside of prototyping electronics. If you notice, the smoothie uses USB-B, which is the kind of connector you want. It's shielded. It, it can stand a lot more stress moving in and out on a board. That's the connector we want to use for, you know, a production style board. We don't use uh, micro USB. So that's part of our, our issues with the printer bot. The other was that this hot end, the one they provide, the Ubis hot end, actually has uh, too big of a, a hot zone. And it's made out of ceramic, so it distributes the heat into the hot zone. That's a big problem. That causes jams with ABS. Um, that's not cool, especially not for the amount of money we're talking about. You guys could have put an E3D hot end on this and then sent it back out. This video's purpose is not to, to, to bash PrinterBot. I'm just detailing why certain mods were made. Um, the mods were made for good reason. The, the regular heat bed that goes up underneath that, uh, that, that bed right there, that has uh, normally been powered by the printer board itself. Well, see, the, the issue in that is, again, you're relying on your board to provide power instead of your power supply to provide power. This causes a bad problem. Normally when we're running it, if you look everywhere else the way printers are designed, they run with a 12 volt um, relay. This 12 volt relay pushes 12 volts from your power supply directly to the heat bed so that it gets enough juice to do what it needs to do. Um, I, like I said, I over engineer the shit out of everything. So I opted for this nice little AC powered independently controlled heat bed. Why is that desirable? Well, you know, in case you want to print in, in filaments that are not exactly standard, like your, you know, carbon fiber or your nylons that have higher heat requirements, if you don't want your filament to crack, the cracking is caused by rapid cooling, meaning that you're, you're, you're not producing enough even heat across your, your heat bed surface. You can combat that by raising your heat bed temperature although not to the point that you see the elephant foot artifact. Elephant foot is where a print is, is squished at the bottom and that's, uh, that's a sign of you know you have too much heat. Um, your bottom layers are melting on, 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 on the bottom of your, your, your layers on top basically looking like an elephant's foot how it's kinda expanded at the bottom and concave at the top. That the uh, proper a proper heat, printed heat bed will, will solve that along with some fiddling and figuring out what uh, proper temperatures you need. So for this, uh, this, this heated print surface and you know, ABS plastic, what I use is 115 degrees. 115 degrees C is just magic. I don't know why. It works. So I leave it alone. Unlike everything else I have. Um, anyway. So that's the first update to the smoothie. 
Uh, we're going to be putting another video up shortly that shows the smoothie moving and gets into the software, um, your, your firmware, other stuff. It's not too bad. It's actually really cool. Um, I, I highly recommend the smoothie board. They're easy enough to work with. The guys on the forum, you know, you have to be patient. They're not going to be able to answer everything immediately, but they do generally get you a good answer, and I've been fairly impressed. So let's, uh, let's sign off for now. My name is Ben Kentop from Charleston, South Carolina. Have a great day.